Okay, we're going to do um, implicit differentiation, a little bit of that, but we're going to actually do um, fractional exponents. At the end of this chapter, you're going to be able to find the derivative of anything. Right now, we haven't been able to find the derivative of all the things yet. But this, today, fractional exponents, you can actually use the power rule on this, okay? The power rule is when you bring down the number and subtract one off, yeah. All right, so here we go. Number one, we're going to jump right into it. We're going to find dy dx, okay? And I have a few problems for you. Here we go. Num, letter A. Just a few. One, two, three, four, five. We'll do five. Okay, uh, let's say we have y equals x to the 5 fourths. Okay, super easy. I think we've even done something like this on a quiz or test or something. Uh, we're going to find the derivative of this. So there's no chain rule. There's no implicit differentiation. Take the derivative of y and get dy dx. And you're going to use your power rule, which says to bring down 5 fourths and then subtract 1 off. 5 fourths minus 4 fourths is 1 fourth. And that's it. That's your answer. Okay. You can leave it like that. Uh, sometimes the book might rewrite this as 5 fourths times the fourth root of x. That's fine, too. So what's the catch? Like Nothing. Well, we're going to have some harder ones. We're going to have some with product rule and stuff like that. But yeah, today's lesson's a lot easier than Friday's. OK, let's do another one. Um, you can't leave negative exponents in your answers, though, so be careful. So let's do y equals the sixth root of x. Y equals the sixth root of x. Um, for me, I would rewrite this so that it's in its power form, in its exponential form. So I would write this as y equals x to the 1 sixth, and now take the derivative of that. You don't have to use dy dx if you don't like it. You can use y prime if you prefer that. So we'll go y prime equals, bring the 1 sixth down to the front, subtract 1 from 1 sixth, and what do you get? Negative 5, 6, okay? Um, now, you're not allowed to leave negative exponents in your answer, so you will need to fix this. We'll go 1 over 6 times x to the 5, 6. You can leave it like that. You can write the 6th root of x to the 5th if you prefer. It doesn't matter. Either way, okay? All right, we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. Here comes the next one. Until now. All right, y equals cosine of x to the 3 halves. Okay. Now we're going to need to use chain rule. Do you see how there's two functions going on here? There's the power of 3 halves, and there's the inside function of cosine x. Now, do you remember chain rule from last week? No. A little bit? No. No. Okay. Here we go. It's the, uh, we got to take the derivative of the outer function, leaving the inside alone. So you're going to bring 3 halves down leave cosine x as is, and then subtract 1 off. All I'm doing is the power rule. So that would be to the 1 half. One half. Times the derivative of the inside function, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. negative sine. Good. Negative sine of x. OK. And then you can rewrite this. You put the negative out front, negative 3 halves. I'm going to even put sine x. And then you can write the square root of cosine x if you want to. You can leave it as to the one half either way. All right, so chain rule. It's easier when someone says, hey, you need to use chain rule on this, and then you see it. But yeah, you're going to have to know. Um, let's do two more. And then I'll let you have a chance to work on your homework or play flappy golf. Two, sorry. OK. Y equals 3x plus 1 to the 1 third. Okay, this is another one that's going to have a chain rule here. So I see an outer function of 1 third, inner function of 3x plus 1. I'd like you to try this one on your own. I'm going to pause the video. Shout out to Kyla and Shannon. Let's do it. Here we go. All right, y prime or dy dx, whatever you prefer. Bring the 1 third down to the front. Don't forget this very important uh, keep the inside alone. Subtract 1 from 1 third, or 1 third minus 1 is negative 2 thirds. And then times 
3. Mm -hmm. The derivative of the inside function. Now, the cool thing about this is that your 1 third and your 3 will cancel out. And then you get y prime equals 3x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. You really, you really want, I called you geo. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you really want to move it down so that it becomes positive. Sorry, sorry, Gregorio. I didn't mean to call you Geo. There you go. All right, let's do one more. I promised you five. You know, I don't want to go back on my word. No. All right, letter E. Y equals 2X times the square root of X cubed plus 1. All right, for this one, there's quite a few things involved in this problem. First thing, you look at this, and you know that you're going to have to do product rule. Yes? Yes. Okay, because this is times that. And then you're also going to need to do chain rule on the second part of the product rule. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite this real quick. This is 2x times x cubed plus 1 to the 1 half. There we go. So we're going to do product and chain rule. You guys ready? Here it is. Y prime equals. So we're going to go A times B prime. So 2X times the derivative of this part right here. So that would be 1 half times X cubed plus 1 to the what? Negative 1 half. Subtract 1 off times the derivative of the inside, which is 3x squared. Is everyone okay with that? That was just a times b prime. Plus b, which is x cubed plus 1 to the 1 half, times a prime, which is 2. Yep. Okay, now I need to fix this. I need to clean it up. So y prime equals the 2 and the 1 half cancel out. I have an x and then a 3x squared. Let's put those together as 3x cubed. And I'm going to take this thing right here to the negative 1 half, and I'm going to move it down to the bottom. What happened? Did I do something wrong? Correct. Shoot. No, because I mess up all the time. So if, if you see something, let me know. All right. And then, yes. And then this, this square root right here has to drop down to the bottom. It becomes the square root of x cubed plus 1. And then over here, we get plus 2 times the square root of x cubed plus 1. That would be, you don't need to rationalize this, okay? Whenever you're radicals, it's fine. Just leave it. But that would be the derivative. Would you like to find the second derivative of this? Uh, Me neither. No. I don't get paid enough. That's, part, that's past my pay grade. 